there? Yes, sir. Yeah. The woman will be introducing our guest today. Uh, afterwards, Dr. Binde will take over the session. Come on, madam. Yeah. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, nice. A great privilege for me to introduce uh, today's uh, guest, Dr. P. Himabindu, ma'am. Uh, Madam Assistant Professor in Physics and a Postdoctoral Research Associate from the University of Surrey, UK. And uh, Madam is a IQSC Coordinator at Nizam's College and she holds a Master's and PhD degree in Physics and also a Master's in Psychology from Kakpia University, Warangal. Uh, she has a collaboration with HCU, University of Malaya and University of South Florida and University of Surrey, UK, for her research activities. She also has a postdoctoral research at, uh, researcher at University of Surrey, United Kingdom. Ma'am is currently working on the synthesis of non-toxic non nanoparticles for various applications of radiation uh, dosimetry, and her research interests are radiation physics, nanomaterials, physics and medicine, and biology, alternative energy, bioinformatics, and um, Ma'am has visited and presented her research in USA, Malaysia, and United Kingdom as a part of career development. Uh, Madam has put in uh, 15 years of teaching experience, both at graduate and postgraduate levels. She has an experience in teaching nanoscience, solid state physics, mathematical physics, optics, thermodynamics, me uh, mechanics, electricity, uh, magnetism, and modern physics. EM theory is the most taught subject of her. She, she held the post of HOD at Nizam's College from July 2016 to July 2018. And ma'am has been uh, holding an administrative positions such as a coordinator for SWIM programs of UGC and also a co con convener for Women Empowerment Cell at Nizam College. She has uh, organized several uh, seminars and one international conference. Research, re, as a resource person, she is, has a diversified knowledge in the areas of physics, nanoscience, psychology, and ICT tools, etc. She is also an active volunteer for Voice for Girls, uh, Ashwin Maharaja Foundation and Planetary Society India. She actively participates in government education programs like TV shows, science exhibitions, etc. So apart from this, I personally had a great experience uh, attending the program of HRD, you uh, are workshop on digital tools. Madam has uh, very systematically coordinated the programs and arranged the programs and made us stick on to the system right from 9 o'clock till 5.30. <laughs> we at 5.30, we feel tired and we were eagerly waiting for the next sessions. So and not only after after 5.30, uh, from morning 9 o'clock, not 9 o'clock, I can say from morning 7 o'clock till late night, 12 o'clock, she used to address various issues of the participants. Such was a great patience and uh, without any tiresome, she used to address all the uh, issues of the participants. And definitely I hope today's session will be uh, very uh, uh, full of information and we would gain knowledge uh, through this session. And thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity and hand over the session to Bimu ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much for your nice words and good feedback, ma'am. It gives so much of encouragement and motivation for me. Yeah. Uh, sir, is my screen visible to everyone? Uh, it is visible. Yes. So, um, as per the request of your IQC coordinator, Mr. Eliad, uh, today I would like to talk about the importance of assessment and accreditation for higher education institutions. A very good afternoon to everyone, all the teachers out there. I know everybody is more senior, like is everybody is a senior person here, but yet because of the online experience what I have in, in my college and in the other colleges as well, I would like to share a few things which are useful for your institutions as 
you, uh, sir told me that you people are trying to go for the next accreditation process submission of SSR and also the peer team visit so hope my presentation or my words would encourage you people and you will succeed in achieving a good grade for your college not less than A all the best thank you so I myself am Dr. Himabindu and Uma ma'am has given me given a very long introduction about me like what I was or what I am what I'm doing and all these things um, so currently my position is IQSC coordinator at uh, Nizam College which is a constituent college of Osmani University Hyderabad okay so I'll start uh, with this question which is like a bit interesting to everyone the question is do you recognize this um, can can few people turn on their microphones and tell me what it is Hello. We are not able to see. Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal. Somebody is not able to see. Please pin my video, ma'am. Please pin my name. You can see my video. Okay. Um, everybody, I mean, Elliot, sir, please help them if yeah. somebody is not able to see the screen. Because I am yeah, showing yes, good yeah. slides which are very important for them to understand how it looks like. So people... Uh, please, uh, Bindu Madam, name will be there. Just uh, click, click on that. So you are able, able to see the screen. Please okay. click Dr. Okay. Bindu Madam link there. Yes, sir. Are you able to see, Madam? Yes, everybody. Everybody, is my screen okay? Okay, ma'am. Right. So, recognize this monument. Please tell me what it is. Taj Mahal, somebody was saying. Is, is, it, is it Taj Mahal? Is everybody agreeing with the word Taj Mahal? Looks like that. All 100% yes? <laughs> yes. Yes. So, you might be thinking, who is that foolish person who will not know this no monument? People might even wonder why I have asked this question. But I will tell you, can you recognize each and every monument? This is what I'll ask you in the next slide. Please see this. Look at this one. Do you know this college? Do you, uh, I mean, do, do you recognize this thing? No. No. So out of all the participants, how many participants are there, sir? Like 30? 30? 34 yeah. are there. Yeah, 34. So, so is there any person, any single person who will identify this college? This is a college from India itself. Taj Mahal is from India and this college is also from India. Okay, right. Keep this question for you. I'll go to the next slide and then we'll continue with our discussion. Yes. Can you identify this? Osmania University. Yes, Osmania. How many people say Osmania University? Everybody or like half? Everybody. Yes, Arts College. Yes, Osmania Arts College. So this is also one college from our country uh, which is Usmani Arts College but everybody could recognize that but the other college nobody could recognize that one what is the difference between the three slides which I have shown you like the first one which was Taj Mahal the second one which was a college third one is also a college is there a difference in identifying these things and how did the difference come from? The first one, the first one is one of the seven wonders of the world. Even I too have voted for it. There was a competition like a poll, uh, choose the seven wonders of the world and I have voted for Taj Mahal. Yes, it is seven wonders, one of the seven wonders of the world. And uh, there are only very few people who do not recognize that monument in the entire world. It is that popular. The next one was some college. So I have taken that picture from uh, a college in Gujarat, which is a college, some college, and nobody knows it. Even if I show the logo, emblem, gate, everything, people will, will not recognize that college. So... What is the difference between Ch Taj Mahal and this college? Popularity. popularity. Yes, popularity. That's the word. So please, please note that word. Keep that word aside. The third one is Osmania University 
or the arts college us money you, you could say like you didn't say this is ou you didn't say this is ou logo or some symbol of ou but you said arts college in specific so this college in the entire usmani university has a special recognition so in the usmani university if i am showing you other departments maybe college of engineering or uh, microbiology department or or uh, chemistry department you would have like ah uh, what is this is it the one which i saw blah 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 but when i showed you arts college in specific from usmani university you could easily recognize that this is arts college usmani university so this also came from the popularity so i, I don't say this is as popular as taj mahal but for our country arts college usmani university is definitely popular i can say how did it become popular is it because of the um, riots or uh, the telangana moment or the mir usman ali khan or the garden or the building or the structures what is it famous for so you know you you better know what is it famous for yes osmania arts college is uh, good at academics there are several streams of uh, social sciences humanities in that and language is also so many uh, we have a bank in that and we have something like a jail a prison also yes it is famous for all these things but it became more popular in the country because of the telangana agitation telangana movement freedom movement which was happening in front of the arts college and this made arts college reach every common public okay so somehow good or bad somehow popularity is the thing or publicity is the thing which is make us which is making arts college being identified or taj mahal being identified by people so do you need i mean uh, does narendra modi need any um, what you say like introduction by somebody saying this is narendra modi and this is uh, prime minister of india no because he talks on man ki baat and he reaches all the nation and everybody knows him almost everybody knows him like he is the prime minister of india mr narendra modi so popularity is what it matters and popularity comes through publicity through communication through showcasing and how we will do that and what is the link between this popularity and accreditation i'll i'll tell you in this slide so we are talking about accreditation you can read the definitions of accreditation what are the goals of accreditation but this accreditation it has a link with the popularity that is when you are saying taj mahal is one of the seven wonders and it's being uh, popularized or it, it is accredited by majority of the public as one of the wonders and then it has become popular so that is how our institution or your institution also becomes popular with your accreditation so may not be nac accreditation it may be something else so somebody else also can accredit it but because nac is a body associated with ugc we are speaking more about nac and we feel we personally feel that the accreditation process of nac is authentic or it's very good that we trust the grade so we cannot say like ah okay somebody might be giving a grade a plus grade and i don't care about that even if this institution is a c grade that's okay i don't i don't uh, worry about the score card or the grade things i am i'm just an easy person i don't say like that or you don't say like that you or me or we we all trust this society or this institution called as nac n a a c national accreditation assessment council so when i say this accreditation is something similar to popularity your college if it wants popularity if it wants recognition then it must have the nac accreditation and this meeting or my uh, myself talking here is all about this popularity or the accreditation so you please read this sentences 
I, I don't want to read all those. You can see it is the recognition that an institution maintains standards requisite for its graduates to gain admission to other reputable institutions of higher learning to achieve credentials. And what is the goal? Goal of accreditation is to ensure that education provided by institutions of higher education meets acceptable levels of quality. So you, you please go through this slide and I'll tell you. When you say the goal of accreditation is to ensure that education provided by institutions of higher education meets acceptable levels of quality. So what is the acceptable level of quality? So what do you understand by acceptable level of quality? When I go to a, a college or uh, a university regularly, I sit in the same place regularly over the years. I don't find it like there is some fault with the institution or I don't think that okay my institution is lagging behind or I don't think like there is no quality in this and all. Why? Because I get habituated to the same place. It's like our own house. You live in your house. You never go outside. You don't find like I have to renovate it or I have to paint it. I have to clean it properly. I have to change the curtains. All these things we don't feed. But when you start going outside and checking other uh, luxurious flats or you check others houses or some other construction, some offices, then you might feel like, oh, okay, this is how others have improved and I should change. So you change, I mean, you come back and you renovate, you change, you feel happy, you feel fine. But is that enough? No. It's a continuous process. So the same way your institution is also like that, like, like your house. So you don't feel that you must bring some changes in that or you don't feel that it's below some quality level. But who will tell you that what is the standard quality level and how you have to maintain? That job is NAC's job. So to tell you, in the standard of quality, so they, they give certain metrics, which we call it as qualitative metrics and quantitative metrics. So NAC is going to tell us, depending on those metrics, where we are standing. I mean, where our institution is standing among other institutions of this country, not the world. Uh, for your information, NAC is not going to give you any grade globally. It is going to give you only a grade compared to India. So according to Indian standards, they have set up a certain standard levels which are acceptable by majority of the higher education institutions. It's not you and me who are accepting. It's like majority of the institutions accepting. So when they are accepting, these people have put a score for each and every metric. And depending on the score, they will decide where you are. Like your CGPA. So if you have your like 10th, 10th class or inter, intermediate children for you. You know what is CGPA and how the grading system is, how it works. So the same way our institution is also being graded. And why do we need grading? This is what I told you. If I am sitting in my house all the time, I never compare myself with anybody, then I don't improvise myself. I think this is fine and I am good and all. I don't improvise myself at all. I don't think about hygiene also. But when I compare with others, I know where I stand, what is lagging and to my abilities, to my capabilities where I can reach. It's not the same as the other person, but to my abilities where I can go, I can start improvising myself. Also, like while writing an exam, you and me, we are writing some exam. So while writing exam, if there are no marks for the exam, it's easy for you like you may apply fee you just go for attendance you write something whatever you like if there is no barrier like for 30 marks your pass and sorry 30 marks your fail 40 marks your pass for 60 your first class and for 70 your distinction if somebody does not put any kind of mark there you and me we are not going to read anything absolutely we will sit idle We'll pay the fee, whatever it is. We might even go to the exam also. But 
if there is no target we will not perform well so this is the same thing with the accreditation of higher education institutions if this nac did not put any kind of uh, score barrier like a grading our higher education institutions i bet are not going to perform properly at all what if we don't perform yes there are uh, many of my beloved colleagues or my friends who will say why should we for what especially you you and me we both are from government you are in a government college and i am in a government college and we feel okay we have a government job and we are we are earning more than 1 lakh six digit figure that's fine we are blessed people we are fortunate why should we do any hard work for what for whom so this is the question many people ask me and they even suggest me like everybody is not working why do you do but that's not the uh, correct thing my friends it's not the correct thing at all i'll tell you why it is important for us teachers to work properly for this accreditation and how this accreditation is going to help your college and also help the other stakeholders of your college and where it is going to lead us so you might find it a bit like hard thing to listen to what i am speaking today but i am speaking the truth because i am in that system like your iqsc coordinator mr eliath also will know what what is like to be a iqsc coordinator and how it is uh, going to be with uh, ssr and uh, peer committee visit and with grade also so if you understand what it is that's very good i'm very happy for you but if you don't understand that i just uh, advise you i will not request you because okay that's not my institution so i'm not going to request you but i'll advise you for the next one hour please listen carefully to what i am speaking and also watch my screen you will understand what is the value of accreditation nac grade and why we should work for our stakeholders okay friends uh, let us see let us go to the next slide but before that you can see there are several accreditation accrediting agencies then nac is one of such agency institutions request an agency evaluation and that meet an agency's criteria are then accredited by that agency so here in the place of agency you put the word nac so nac is our agency and we are paying money to nac it's more than 1 lakh i guess Uh, because ours is autonomous college we have paid so much i think uh, your gdc begum pet is also paying something like that so they will pay to nac and they'll say you please come to our house assess our house assess our house members and give a rating for our house this is what we are asking nac is not interested in coming and giving any accreditation to you but you yourself want to stay in the competition you want to showcase yourself to others that yes we are still there we are existing we are not somebody like extinct institution we are in the race you please come to us and show to the world that we are there in the race and at what place so this is how we request nac indirectly by paying them and this agency or the nac is coming and it will see whether this agency's criteria or the nac's criteria is being met by the institution and then this agency the nac is giving us some accreditation like a a plus plus or something so what are the advantages of this accreditation accreditation is important because it helps determine if an institution meets or exceeds minimum standards of quality so i told you some minimum standards so what is that some minimum standard which is approved by majority of the higher education institutions and how this higher education institutions approve it from the feedback of stakeholders so i'll come to that point who is our important stakeholder and who has to approve all these things so you will be surprised to know who is our stakeholder and where we are standing 
right so accreditation always helps us to see whether our institution is at least meeting the required standards at least it's a minimum thing so you can excel you can improve and there is always a chance of improvement you cannot deny a chance of improvement and change is inevitable nothing is permanent change is inevitable so you improve yourself you have to change it again you have to improve 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 it's a continuous process as you say like communicate 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 with your students for the institution i'll say improve 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 nothing more than that and what's the next advantage helps students determine acceptable institutions for enrollment yeah so here comes the key word or the key person into picture who is he the student it helps the student determine acceptable institutions for enrollment now why is this student important like you might be feeling i am assistant professor or associate or i am professor and i am principal here like i am the boss here yes so what i'll say so what student is the important stakeholder of any educational institution i i, I don't know whether you agree with me or not but that's the truth that's the fact no students no institution agree with me school junior college degree college pg college technical college university everything everything runs around whom the student you have students you have jobs you have vacancies you have buildings for them you construct labs you extend you like you try to excel grade is also for them you are trying to get accreditation for the students to know which college to choose which universities to choose and if the student is not there your university or your institution is just a zero you might have super facilities everything fine but if there are no students if there is no enrollment what is our fate for us like we are fortunate that we are into government ours is government job we are good but for others for temporary jobs is that a good thing that there are no students what about future do you expect any kind of uh, recruitments further if there are no students i have worked as a degree college lecturer like for 2 years i have worked um, my first appointment was in tirur government degree college which is uh, near to khammam and my second appointment was at gdc huzurabad so which is just near to varangal my native place so i worked in both the places and we were about to go for nac in in both the cases also but that uh, there we did not have this online thing we had this offline thing but when i saw there you know our fate was every june like june or july we would collect data from the nearby junior college like who has passed which subject so because i am a physicist so all our science teachers uh, physics teachers maths teachers and chemistry teachers especially physics and chemistry physical science teachers we would distribute the sheet who all have passed in mpc in intermediate take the sheet go to nearby villages in 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 auto or car or whatever possible way speak to those students collect them go to their houses meet their parents counsel them saying we degree college faculty have come to you to show ourselves these are the faculty our qualification is like this we are phd's we are this we are that our college extends in this area this is so big we are giving these facilities you please join your child in our college do you expect this i don't think so because you are in city and you don't need this but the people who are outside the city are doing this in villages in rural places so i asked i asked one of my seniors my my in charge department head why are we doing this i don't need to do this we are degrading ourselves we are we are teachers we are faculty 
and we are not going. I am not coming with you, I said. You know what he said? You are thinking about yourself, but if students are not there this time, CCE will come to know that there are no students in that group and in the next year they will wind it up. So there will be no group, no group like MPC or no group like MPCS. And then what happens, you know, they will transfer you to some other place and there will be no recruitment in this college again. So thus, if you are not going and bringing the students, you yourself are putting yourself into trouble. And the next thing is, you will be the reason for lack of recruitments in our college. This is what he said. And the fact was really shocking. But yet it is the truth and I had to accept it, approve it. So that case is more clearly visible because it's in a rural area and the admissions are less. But what about us? You know, there are private universities right now. What if the people are choosing? What if the students are choosing private universities? They get scholarship anyway. They go anywhere, they get scholarships. What if the students are not choosing our institutions? Just, just think for yourself for a while. We are going to face the same thing as I faced in Hujrabad or Tirbur. And we are the reason for it. Okay, our bellies will be full. We will get food. But we are spoiling our, uh, the future of this institution. And also of future generation. Yes, we are doing it. Please. Next. Assist institutions in determining acceptability of transfer credits. So, this is like, uh, you know, the transfer of credits. Like UGC has approved the transfer of credits this year. Now, if somebody is coming from some other institution, like some girl is wanting to come from GDC, Khartabad, uh, sorry, GDC, Begumpet to my college, to Nizam College. She is bringing some credits. She will say like, I want to transfer. But I want to know whether your college is an authorized college or authentic college or like is it a reputed one or something like dummy. I want to know that. So in that case, your accreditation will help me know what is the level of your college and then I can accept. See, I cannot accept uh, uh, credits from a gradeless college, from a nameless college, right? So if you are like, if you are also B++ B plus plus or if you are A, A++ plus plus and you are coming from, you are transferring your credits from there, then I will be happy like, okay, this child has brought credits from that institution means that institution maintains standards and that standard institution has given credits to this boy, so boy or girl. So those are authentic grades and I can accept it. This is what we think. Something like your uh, sweets. If somebody brings sweet box with a label Pulla Reddy, will you say like what quality or when did they make or did you taste them? Do you ask all such questions? No, I don't think you will ask. You will say like, ah, okay, G Pulla Reddy. Good. Immediately open the box, put something in the mouth. There is no quality check because we know that that shop is an authorized shop. It has set up its own standards and we believe that there is quality in its product. The same with our institutions. If I bring a sweet box to you without any label, there is no label on that. It's an empty sweet box. There's no name. I bring it to you. Then what you might do? Like, should I open it or not? No. It's Corona time. I'm not touching. Okay. If it's not Corona, what you will do? You might smell it first. Taste it next. And then sometimes you may even not touch it. Because you might think this person might not have the standards. You don't know whether they have standards or not. But because there is no label, there is no accreditation for the standards. You might think that this is not authentic. This is not good and I am not touching it. We say like that. See, while taking a mobile phone, what do you say? What do you say? If I bring, like I myself, you know, so many of you know me. 
like as Dr. Himabindu is from uh, Nizam College or currently organizing programs with University of Hyderabad. Yes, I have a name. But yet, if if I show you some, some mobile like this and say like, okay, uh, this is what I am authorizing and I am giving you, please buy it. Will you buy my mobile? Without any label. I will just come and I will give you. You know me. But yet, I will just give you. Will you buy that? No. But if I show you the label, look at the label here. If everybody can see this is, can anybody tell me what is this label? Anybody? iPhone. Yes. Now, what's this? Like yes. You see the symbol, there is no name here, but you just saw the symbol and you could tell that this is Apple iPhone. So, how did you know it? That is the popularity coming from the quality they maintain. If I show you some other symbol and if I ask you like what is that, you, you might not say. I mean like you, you can't even say which brand it is. You don't know. So this branding is coming from the quality or the standards they maintain. And if I am going to sell you this iPhone or Samsung, you will not ask me any question. Because you know what is Samsung and you know what is Apple. And if you have money, you will be ready to purchase it. You will not have questions at all. Same with the builders. You are going for some construction company. You will not ask so many questions if it is a popular company. Like, you know, like, okay, My Homes is a popular com popular brand. Uh, you will trust that, okay, these people, uh, they build very nice and uh, like luxurious flats and you will trust them you will not hesitate paying money for them but if somebody like me like me they come and they say like oh i am going to build like 100 uh, storied apartment you please trust me and you do that you will have so many questions and many will not be interested to invest in me that comes with the quality assurance assessment accreditation so hope you, you understood what is the value of accrediting anything. It's not just the iPhone. It's not just the sweet box. It, it is the same case with anything. It is the same with our educational institution also. Why? Because this is the world. We are living in a world where rating matters. You travel in an auto and immediately a message comes please rate this auto driver you get a parcel you get an item from flipkart or amazon immediately they will ask you please rate us why because everybody will check the rating i don't know you whether you do that or not personally i do that so when i go to amazon or flipkart i want to buy something some product especially if it is electronic gadget kind of thing or some item which stays long I'll go with the ratings I'll check whether the rating is more than 4 or not 4, 4, above 4 is good but if it is below 4 no, certainly not even if he is giving for uh, like 80% off or 90% off still I will not go for the product so rating plays a vital role in choosing a commodity in purchasing a commodity here what is the community we are selling education we are not giving it for free my dear friends you might think this is government institution and we are giving it for free then who the hell is paying for us we are taking money you are not doing any service you are selling your service for the salary which the government is paying yeah you and me might be the part of government but yet nobody is doing any kind of service here we are selling our services our talents we are we are being paid i'm talking here i'm selling my voice making money so for this money where i'm taking i'm trying to sell my commodity so what is the quality of the commodity you are giving that's what the student wants to understand. The student's parents have to understand and also the employers have to understand. These are the main stakeholders of our higher educational 
institutions or higher education institutions. You can see the next point here helps employers determine the validity of programs of study and whether a graduate is qualified. Like a boy is getting aeronautical engineering certificate from Nizam College. Suppose Nizam College is a legendary college. Obviously we completed uh, 133 years so it is 134th year running now right now so it has a great history privilege so if somebody is taking aeronautical engineering degree from my college and they're showing that okay i did aeronautical engineering from nizam college will the employer believe it just like that no he will go to the website he will check with the website, go to Nizam College site and check whether this course is running or not. And he will find that there is no aeronautical engineering in this college. So for him to check on the website, when he will do, when he knows that Nizam College is a reputed institution of standards, then only he will check. You tell some name, I will say like Himabindu's College of Air Force. Who knows? Nobody knows. So if somebody is saying something like this, they will not even care to check whether this college exists or not. But if the college exists and it has a good name and if he is intending to take the student, then he will go to the website and check for the courses. And if the course is existing in that college and the weightage is more for the student. So here the student is being benefited at the end. Okay, employer might be getting a help with accreditation and with all this popularity. But who is the end person being benefited? It is the student. So students are temporary. We might think like students are temporary. Each year like thousands of students come and go. But we are the permanent people here. So we are the strongest people or we are the main stakeholders, but no. Students come and go, they are temporary, but they are the important stakeholders. The, any educational institutions, as I told you, it stands, it works, it exists only because of the students, only with the students and only for the students. So this is the word I want everybody attending this meeting to understand. We as teachers are not working for ourselves and our family. You are earning for your family, but you are working for the students. There is a difference. You are earning money for your family and for yourself, but you are working in a higher education institution or any education institution for the sake of the benefit of the students, which are the very very important stakeholder of our institution so hope you are clear with the advantages of accreditation see the last one employers offer require evidence that applicants have received a degree from an accredited school or program so now by now you must have uh, known the difference between program and course so earlier we used to say programs as courses but now they are different like BA is a program, BSc is a program, MA is a program. So from school, school is department. Like if you see University of Hyderabad, they don't say department of physics, they say like school of physics, school of social sciences and all. So school is like department, your program is the code in the modern days. So any employer might require the evidence that this degree has been obtained from an authentic institution so that's how this accreditation is helping both students and employers then helps employers determine eligibility from employee tuition reimbursement programs so if uh, the student is going for internships and if they want to see whether he is eligible for any reimbursement your institution must be accredited so he, it also helps like that Graduates to sit for certification programs involves staff, 
faculty, students, graduates, advisory boards, institutional evaluation and planning, creates goals for institutional self-improvement. This is the very important advantage I can tell you. It creates goals for institutional self-improvement. Friends, please understand this word self-improvement. Who is going to improve you? Who is going to bring a change? Nobody. I will talk here, but I am not coming to your college to make you uh, sit for so many hours, do the work or uh, use ICT for your students and do some innovative programs for the development of students and all. No, I am not going to do all these things. I might say you have to get A grade or A plus grade, but I am not the one who is going to get the grade for you. So who is doing this? It is you. Institution itself. Who is institution? Institution comprises of employer, employees, stakeholders. So who is the employer here? Like your boss, maybe the principal or the RJD or somebody. Employees, teaching employees and non-teaching employees. So you have all cadres of non-teaching employees, one, two, three, four. Everybody, everybody makes institution for that matter. Even, even our Kama T also makes the institution. Teachers, all grades of teachers, whether they are full-time teachers or part-time teachers, assistant, associate, professor, everybody. All these people, they make the institution. But this institution will not be called as institution until you have students. If you don't have students, it's an office. <coughs> if you have students, then it is an institution. So for this institution, it has to check for improvement. That's what I was telling in the beginning. When you say what is the key for uh, getting in touch with the students or to make them learn properly online, the key is communicate, communicate, communicate. And the key for any educational institution to put itself in a higher note is improvement, improvement and improvement. And nobody else is bringing this improvement but for you. So the institutional itself is making improvement. So hence we are calling it as self-improvement and you can put some goals. Like I can put a goal like by knowing the NAC thing. In NAC it will ask like do you have NIRF? Do you have ISO? And do you have this IC login? Did you do that? Uh, do you have NBA accreditation? So I will ask all those questions. So when it is asking I will put a goal for myself like yes. By next year, I am going to get ISO certification. Okay, in, in so and so month, I am going to apply for NARF. Okay, IC login. Did I do that IC login? No. Okay, I am doing that IC login. So, these kind of things like you are going for accreditation and the accreditation criteria itself is helping me to improve myself. So me in the sense, it's not Nisam College, friends. It's every institution. It's it's even GDC, uh, Begum Pet. So I'll say, now onwards, when I say me, myself, please take that word as GDC, Begum Pet. And who is GDC, Begum Pet? It is you. All the staff of GDC, Begum Pet is GDC, Begum Pet. All the staff. So everybody in that, teaching and non-teaching, have to involve yourself as the institution on whole like institution is an embodiment and you are part of it and, you, and it cannot be detached it's not separate so you think yourself as an institution and please check with whatever i am showing on the screen right now if i say self-improvement of the institution it is your improvement it's my improvement so if it is my institution i say it is my improvement For that, what, what do we need? For self-assessment, what do we need? What do we need to do? This is the best, best slide I like. It's a very nice slide. If you can see, 
360 degrees evaluation. 360 degrees evaluation. So who is going to be evaluated and why 360 degrees? Just, just wait for uh, 10 seconds and you please answer me. Like give me a few answers. Please give me answers. Did you type anything in the chat box? It isn't engineering college. Reputed degree, PG, MBA, NCA college. Uh, I didn't understand Mr. Venkateshwarlu. Um, sir? Madam, madam, madam. Uh, why, why, what is this answer? No. Sir? It's breaking, sir. I can't hear you. Madam, uh, regarding Nijam College, uh -huh. uh, you are explaining examples of uh, engineering college, no? Uh -huh. For example, you are saying uh, Nijam College, that's not part. Nijam College is uh, for. Uh, only degree, MBA, Yeah, yeah. MCA. No, no. I was giving you an example. Example is anything. Our yes, college is one. not engineering. And I give an engineering certificate from Nizam College. So, obviously, the other person will come to know. Yeah, that's a reputed college, I know. And it's not engineering. So, the certificate is not valid. Yes, I understood, yeah, madam. Yeah. I understood. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Right. So, please, please tell me, okay. like, uh, what... Uh, People, you can put in the chat, what is this 360 degrees evaluation and who is going to be evaluated? You please give me a few answers in the chat box. I am here on the chat. Kindly give me a few answers. Nobody is giving any answer. Why? Sir, is everybody there or only few people are sitting? Every activity of the college, yeah, yeah, all okay. these stakeholders, share madam, the screen. I'm unable to see, madam. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not yeah, sharing not the screen. To, I'm not sharing the screen. Not, Sorry. Yeah, I need to find a chat and all. So they're not. No, no. I'm, I'm on the chat. I am not sharing any screen. Yeah. I'm on the chat box. I'm checking your chat box. Students, ISO, NAS, NAC can evaluate. Everybody is there. <clears throat> all the activities my students do every achievement of the college so when I said uh, students are the important stakeholders so the answer is coming as all the activities which students do no that's that's not just students but uh, everybody is there yeah Gita, every activity of the college right right i'll go back to my presentation and i'll start this uh, is everybody able to see my screen yeah, yes it has come up. yes yeah. so 360 degrees so when i started this slide you could see this how it is revolving what is 360 degrees a mathematician knows it very well you take you take a protractor and then you go as a circle. So it, it completes 360 degrees. So it is sweeping all the points from front to back. You start from a point and then you are going from that point. You just gather everything and you are coming back. So that is called as 360 degrees. So when I say institution as a whole is having teachers, non-teaching staff, the infrastructure, building, students, everything, everything which is making an institution is the 360 degrees here and the evaluation will be 360 degrees. So when NAC is assessing you, NIRF is assessing you, NBA is assessing you, it will go with the 360 degrees. It will not neglect few things. If somebody has a hi-fi building, like some pharmacy colleges, if you go to the uh, 
city outskirts like i have seen few colleges in the outskirts of uh, varangal i didn't see here in hyderabad if you see them the buildings are like immaculate they, they are super good they are super good but sometimes we feel as if we are uh, in a shooting area or like near the white house or something like that but when i say 360 degrees and everybody is included in that what about the quality of teachers that building has we don't know what about the quality of laboratory they have we don't know there may be labs there may be laboratory equipment there may not be quality teachers there may be everything there may not be more students <coughs> there may be students there may be teachers building blah 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 everything is good there is no placement in the college i mean the placement officer is not working he is sleeping they are not able to provide jobs to the students will the students join that institution friends why is everybody after iit why is iit a dream for all the engineers because of its placements you you check that it's not because the professors are too good in teaching they are joining iit it is because of the 100% placements which iit assures you with a good salary again i'll tell you you give 100% placement but what is the average salary of your student who is going out if it is 5000 6000 or 10000 we don't want it in the present day do you think 10000 salary is good for you is enough for you would you allow your your child to join a job for 10000 rupees even if the grade is looking like manager if the salary is just 10000 rupees will you allow your own child to join for that no so when i say placement and for placement also there is a quality where they are being placed are they being placed in ibm maruti wipro infosys yes it matters or are they being placed in himabindu college of uh, uh, what you say technology who knows who knows this himabindu college of technology nobody so even if you are showing something what is the quality of that you are showing some career opportunity for the child but what is the quality of that this is how 360 degrees evaluation is taking place how are your benches how are your boards do you have any uh, projectors with you uh, do you have smart boards are you using still using chalk is your wall painted properly is your student happy with that did you provide proper washroom facility for the child did you provide sanitary napkins to the girls everything everything counts my friends everything everything each and everything a tiny weed in your college also counts because the disposal of your weed disposal of grass disposal of waste paper that is also coming under your nac assessment and there are marks for that they are asking like are you doing anything like vermicompost how are you disposing your green waste and plastic waste how are you doing this are you doing any kind of recycling there is there is marks for this so when i say 360 degrees yes this is 360 degrees you just start from the earth from your ground from the gate of your college you start from the gate of your college you just check with the entire compound wall all the trees in your college the dust the garbage your your benches everything everything comes under 360 degrees evaluation so now hope everybody is clear what is coming under 360 degrees evaluation when i said garbage you should understand what kind of things are coming into assessment why assessment
I'll tell you the importance. How do you feel of anticipation when you are about to take a quiz or test? So you are about to take some quiz, some test. I don't know how many of you have participated in competitions. But I myself have participated in several competitions, especially I was doing this quiz so many times, uh, talent test exams and all for the district. And it's like, what is the next question? Am I ready for the question when you are in the quiz? But if you are just preparing to participate for the quiz, you don't know what kind of questions they will ask. But they might say like this is a science quiz. So the area is only science. It's not uh, history and all. Everything is not included. You are safe up to that. So in your science area, you have to be thorough with each and everything. When they said science, science is very broad. You have life sciences, you have physical sciences, you have mathematical sciences. They can ask anything. So you have to be thorough with all these things get prepared and you will be still like what are they going to ask am i prepared for this am i ready for this and all that is the feeling like when you are going to take a quiz or test and why are we doing this why do we know why do we need to attend for a quiz or test because we know that this world is full of competitions and if i am winning if i stand first in this competition or if there is a prize money for this quiz, I am going to win it. This is what I feel for myself. So in this world full of competitions, so this assessment is something like a quiz or you are going for a test and you have the excitement, you have the uh, like super anxious feeling. Sometimes you may also fear, what if you are going to get a lesser grade than the previous one? This is some sort of doubt that goes in the brain of, you know whom? The IQSC coordinator and the principal. For others, they will say like, okay, we are trying our best to give the data and we are doing this, we are doing that. So it's up to the coordinator how to present and it's up to the principal how they treat the <coughs> peer committee. They think like this, but I'll tell you what, what is the real secret. At later stage, I'll tell you. Now, this world is full of competitions. And if you are participating in a quiz or a test, then only they will recognize you. Otherwise, you are nobody. You are not enrolling. You are nobody. You may get a last rank. You may not get a prize at all. But still, you have to enroll yourself in this quiz or test. This is mandatory. Because the world is full of competitions without competition you cannot succeed you cannot achieve and you have to do it mandatory now <coughs> participate in the race to survive so you have a race and you have to participate in it just to survive who is surviving here who is surviving and uh, who has to help in surviving? Who is surviving and who has to help in surviving? As I told you, it's our institution, my friends, who is surviving. I told you about the GDCs in rural areas. So for the existence, for the survival of the college, you know, there are uh, like few villages where intermediate colleges have been shut down. They have been closed. So it could not survive the competition of private colleges. There are few degree colleges which have been closed. They could not survive the competition. And now, we are trying to survive. Yes, obviously. If we cannot prove ourselves to be good, efficient, capable, 
we are out of the race. You do not enroll into the race. You will be placed nowhere. You have no place at all. Just go out. Just get out. This is what the government says. You just think for yourself. Like if you stand as an authority <clears throat> or your child is going to enter GDC Begum Pet. What is the criteria that you want to check with the college? What is it that you want to uh, be changed in the college? Is there anything in the college that you want to change? So this is how you have to think for yourself. You have to feel for yourself. What am I doing? And how am I involved in this institution? What, how my participation is going to bring a change in the institution? How is it going to help them? And how my failure, how my laziness is bringing a damage to the institution? And how my negligence is going to make the institution quit from the race. Now, in the present day, in the present world, we are in this phase, my dear friends. Get ready for the assessment or quit. So you want to go for the assessment, then only you are surviving. Your institution is surviving. If you are not ready for the assessment, you have to quit from the job. You have to quit from the race. So it's not you alone, but your institution has to quit. As I told you, when I say institution, please attribute to yourself personally because you add all these components together, it becomes an institution. Institution is not a single entity on itself, on its own. The buildings, the teaching staff, the non-teaching staff and the students, they make the institution. So here, you please attribute itself to, yours, uh, to yourself. Participate in this race to survive, get ready for the assessment or just quit. What is the current day need? Why we are speaking of current day? Because we are in the current day. Friends, we, it's not past or it's not future. We are talking about the current day. So present day. As I told you, please think as a parent for a student like where you are trying to seek admission. If you are seeking admission for your child, what will you do for your child? I am very sure you will try to check for all kinds of facilities that you are going to give at home. Whether everything is available with, this, with the college or not. Right? Please see this. <clears throat> Please see the first statement. Please read it. Higher education institutions have experienced increasing pressures to provide accountability data and consumer information on the quality of teaching and learning. So if you have seen your AQAR, the present AQAR, like it has been modified again in the month of February, AQR has been modified again. Almost your AQR is like your mini SSR now, right now. Earlier AQR was a different pattern. SSR was a different pattern on a whole. But now as AQR is just a mini SSR for your academic year. So, okay, that's even better because you make AQAR and you compile all the AQRs and it's something like your SSR. It's not changing. It's, it's much easier to compile. That's good. This mini SSR is asking you each and everything. How much money did you spend for books? How much money did you spend for ICTs? How much money did you get from projects? How much money did the like you get from funds? How many seminars you conducted? Where did your staff go for a training? Did you Organize any faculty development programs. How is your staff's knowledge on IPR? 
Did your students get any placement? If so, where did they get? Please get the feedback from their employers. Are the parents happy with the your children's performance or like your institution's performance? These kind of questions are incorporated in the AQAR and yes you know teachers are even fortunate because they get only few questions like uh, seminars attended workshops attended please say whether they are they have presented oral or poster uh, do you have any publications what is the h index blah 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 but for the iqsc coordinator i know what what the coordinator is doing we are writing several things as i told you we write about the garbage are we disposing it properly is it a what we are doing with the wet wet garbage and we are what we are doing with the dry garbage how much electricity are we sa saving if anybody is interested you can go through our nac bible which is our guidelines nac guidelines ssr guidelines and you can check each and everything whatever i told is true or not and if you still don't want to read you can ask your iqsc coordinator Yes, whether they are whether these questions are there in the SSR or not. Yes, my dear friends, NAC is asking all such questions. They are asking us how many units of electricity you have uh, consumed in one year, and how much did you pay for that, and did you use any LED bulb, LED tube lights? How many did you replace from the uh, traditional ones, and how many solar panels have been installed? How much energy did you save? this is what they are asking us it's hard job it's hard job for the institution your principal knows the difficulty when we are answering all these things it involves a lot of money where this money is coming from it's our job to pull up money get fundings how do we get fundings if we have a good grade for the college good ranking then we can pull up money it's just interlinked you have good grades you can pull up money you have so much money you have good facilities and you get a good grade it's just interlinked so we have to plan what to do now here the higher education institutions are ex experiencing increased pressure why because of the private institutions what we have and the number of institutions what we have and also the uh, want the desire for improvement always like everybody needs improvement in everything like when when somebody is coming to an exam college suppose or gdc begum pet suppose like after 20 years if they are coming and they see the same building okay it may be nostalgic but the students will think like ha ah, it looks it looks too old i am not interested in this i don't feel enlightened it's not like it's not giving me any kind of motivation this this happens so you have to check for the current day need what does the current day need from us so who what is current day absolutely it is students what do the students need from us this is what we have to check i think as the parent of a degree college or a pg college student please you will understand what we need and what has to be changed in the institution this is the best way to assess ourselves you don't need any kind of assessment nag doesn't need to assess you you assess yourself as a parent of a child and you will know what are the pros and cons in your institution whether you will join your child in the institution or not if somebody is asking like can you join your child in gdc megam pet can you say yes if you say yes your institution is doing good if you say no 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 i am not joining her here i am joining her in cbit i am joining her in university of hyderabad then you need to rethink where your college is lagging and why you are not preferring your college so hope you understand what i am saying the current day the need is like the focus on inputs activities research outputs resources used classes taught articles published yes this all these questions are being asked in aqr so all teachers know what is being asked 
So apart from this, whatever I told you, everything is being asked. Everything, they ask us everything. Like how many uh, like part-time teachers were recruited? How much money was given as salaries? Yes, all these questions are being asked in our SSR. Everything goes. Advertise and market yourself. So because we are government institution, we just take it for granted like we don't need to go out, we don't need to advertise in TVs, we don't need to uh, like give a mouth, mouth uh, conversation for anyone. We think like that. So I don't need any canvassing and all. But this assessment, accreditation, we are going for that just to advertise ourselves and also market ourselves. Why marketing? I told you. Education is a commodity right now. It's not just a service. It's not just a service because money is involved. It's not free. So when it becomes commodity, the commodity is going into the market. It has to go into the market. Otherwise, there's no use of the commodity. So it needs marketing. It needs advertisement. Government institutions are not exemption, my friends, as I told you. Government, in, because this is government institution, okay, let me give A grade or A plus grade. No, nothing like that. You are standing in a race along with others, in a same race along with others. You do not have any privilege, any government institutional privilege as we had. We did not have that privilege at all. We just stopped at 2.98, which is very sorrowful, just very bad. But we have no choice. Our government institution is not an exemption from the current day competition. Right? Quality is very important compared to the quantity. So when you say, I have produced like 3,000 students every year, fine. What is the quality? How many students are getting placements? Placement is the one which tells the quality. Right? Say so just teachers getting awards and so much research funding and all these things doesn't make any institution so much desirable. If the students are getting 100% placements with a quality placement, as I told you, like if they are being placed in big, big companies and they're getting good salary on an average, like you see the average monthly salary of the students is like 30,000, 40,000. Yes, everybody will want to go to that institution like the IITs, where the average month salary is something like 80,000, 90,000 a month. What is the quality when you compare to the quantity? Coming to the accreditations, we have these type of accreditations. You know all these things, UGC, NAC, NBA, NARF, AICT, all these things. Not only this, we have 20, total 20 and sometimes more also, but I know some 20 types of accreditations. But of these, the first four are important to us as degree colleges, UGC, uh, NAC, NBA, NARF. AICT is for all the technical institutions, we are not involved and all the other uh, what do you say, accreditations are for other different institutions and not our colleges. So the main are these four and out of all these four, we are specially considering or specially focusing the University Grants Commission and also the NAC. For the University Grants Commission, you know, the 12B, 2F thing, <coughs> 2B, 12F thing, what is that? So you have some uh, recognition by the UGC. So whether your college is under that recognition or not. So when it has that certificate, then only the college is recognized. We need it compulsory. So we'll go for UGC accreditation. And then the NAC, which is, which is a STEM, which is a branch of UGC, is an accrediting agency which we want to go, which is which has been authorized by so many educational institutions as a proper agency which will give a proper grading. So we are going for NAC. So then this is NAC. 
So if anybody wants any break or any questions, I can give a pause now. Anything? Uh, Dr. Bindu, yes. uh, can you express a few points in terms of the criteria, maybe of kind of nature? Yes. Probably? Yes. So shall I continue? Yeah, I think you can. Right. So now we are going for NAC and this is NAC assessment, you know, this is assessment and accreditation council. What is this doing? To know more about this, please go through the manual of SSR for the affiliated or constant colleges. It will tell you each and everything. I'll just take few glances from that manual and I'll tell you how you can go with your SSR and uh, this. So these are the visions of NAC. I don't want to read all this. You can read it for yourself from the manual which is there. If you don't have a manual, you can download it from the NAC website or ask your IQAC coordinator. So what is the approach of this NAC? How are they giving any accreditation to a higher education institutions? So it is following a holistic systematic approach which involves the AQAR first, SSR next, or before that we have IIQA, and then we have SSS, Student Satisfaction Survey, then we have the Peer Committee Visit, and at the end we have the Accreditation. So you might be knowing about the AQARs, the data which, they, which your uh, IQAC coordinator is asking. So now here comes the problem, the data. Few people are lazy to give the data. Few people are negligent to give the data. Few people do not want to give the data. And few people do not contribute to any data. So I don't know where you stand. Please assess yourself. Please think about yourself where you are. Are you giving the data properly for the AQAR? No. So in the beginning, if you did not attend, I mean, in the starting, I was telling you like each and every drop, you know, one, one drop together, you collect in a vessel, it, it makes liter, liter, two liters, three liters, it will fill the vessel, complete vessel, it will fill your bucket also, sometimes your tank. This is the same thing, each and every drop is like your data. So the data which a teacher is giving, each and every drop adds to the SSR sorry AQAR and all the AQRs together it becomes SSR and then we have this SSS and uh, peer committee visit and all so that's a different story but what have you what should you do for AQAR or SSR so self-study report if I am doing that how do you prepare this so please see for any SSR what are the important things you have to do how do you prepare that please read the uh, this slide properly. <coughs> so institution should follow the guidelines provided by NAC while preparing SSR and ensure that it contains the following. What are the following? Evidence of contributing into the core values. So you are saying, I mean, they will ask you what are the core values and you mention some core values and you do not provide proper evidence for the core values it's waste. So my dear friends, all the teachers, it's not just the duty of IQAC coordinator or the principal to check into all these things. Everybody can contribute to this. Each and every teacher can contribute to this. Evidence of building from strengths identified by the institution. Action taken to rectify the deficiencies recognized by the institution. Efforts made by the institution towards quality enhancement. Future plans of the institution for enhancing quality. So the main thing what you have to check is in the previous SSR, what were the achievements you have chosen or what were the drawbacks you have mentioned. Did you rectify all those things in the present SSR? Did you show your strengths 
currently did you improvise yourself to the previous one still previously you had some a or a plus suppose did you improvise yourself or did you stay back this is what is to be checked for ssr so how do we check this okay this checking is good but how do we check this so we have something called as quality indicator framework description for that we have all seven criteria and i i guess uh, all for all the seven criteria there are seven coordinators and they are all working on the different aspects and they are adding everything now the first criteria comes the curricular aspects what are curricular aspects everything which is involved in curriculum like your syllabus examinations change in syllabus skills coming from the curricular aspects feedbacks who is giving what kind of feedback all the stakeholders here yeah, the teachers the uh, employers the parents the students everybody so what kind of skill able courses you are giving to the students this is what they ask so are you able to focus any skill enhanced course here did you provide any new course compared to the previous year or did you make any kind of revisions in the syllabus you might say we have a standard syllabus from 2014 or 15 or 16 and we don't want to change it no because every year every time every day there is always a scope for improvement when i was studying in my degree i had this c programming c++ and java that was so good people used to get jobs with that but now i need python i need something else i have to improvise myself so what is the improvised thing which you have given in your curricular aspects if you did not give until now at least now in the new year now this is the new academic year try to put it in front of your board of studies please try to bring a change in the syllabus not the entire syllabus at least one unit try to add few current topics try to remove something which is very old and which is not useful for the students try to add some skill enhanced courses try to add some employability credential courses so try to see that each and everything adds to the development of the student according to the curricular aspects whichever aspects sorry whichever is given in the curriculum we have teaching learning evaluation in the next one so you know what is this how the teacher is teaching what kind of um, modes he is using to deliver lectures and how he is creating a learning environment for the student and what kind of facilities infrastructure are provided by the uh, institution and how you are evaluating like the mark system so if you are autonomous college you have to tell like are you using any online grading system or cgpa system or are you doing something physical do you have any innovative practice in the examinations and all you have to show all those things otherwise no we have research innovations extension this is exclusively research innovations are exclusively for teachers <coughs> yeah you can involve your students as well if you have phd students or even your projects works even your student project works can be involved in this like if this research is being awarded by any uh, specific agency you can mention that so this funding and some innovations made by you people or your students everything can be involved here and some extension works what are extension works just not in the college and just you are not just sticking to the curriculum you are going beyond the curriculum and you might also go beyond your college you might also go to some other college that is extension so you are 
extending the knowledge or you are extending the curriculum of your college or extending the facilities benefits of your college to some other um, some outsiders some institutions then that comes under your extension activities friends you cannot neglect any of the criteria here see you have seven criteria here you cannot neglect anything you cannot omit anything every criteria is compulsory and teachers just say i have seen like teachers saying i don't have any data for this year oh my god what is that so for one complete year what were you doing just coming writing on the blackboard and going away is that what you did no this is not approved this is not correct what you are doing isn't rightful that is injustice for the institution and for the college please check with the criteria infrastructure so infrastructure is provided by the institution itself but you know institution in the sense like the principal the principal will not know everything like you need benches or you need um, some computers etc etc is the duty of the faculty to give a representation to the head is the duty of the head to go and ask the principal and is the duty of the principal to get the funds so everybody involved in this infrastructure thing in the administration thing it will fetch you marks it will give you marks you give the requirement for the seminar library books so teacher will give to the head head will give to the principal and principal will get it so that is how it works there are marks for each and everything each and everything for the books you purchase for the computers you purchase for the labs you establish for the ramps you give like for the disabled children you are um providing a wheelchair it has marks for the disabled children you are providing ramps you are you are constructing special toilets for them it contains marks each and everything has a weightage student support and progression this comes with placement and sports so if you fail in placements i am afraid you get very less marks in this so what kind of progression they have so the progression can be in the form of sports as well like getting awards some rewards so this is also very important because as i told you students are our important stakeholders we have governance leadership and management so people might be thinking this governance or leadership or management is has nothing to do with me it has all to do with the administration no you yourself a teacher are a leader you are a leader for yourself so the contributions what you make can be added to your aqar the departmental aqar and that can be added to the institutional aqar so that is how you focus or you showcase yourself this is why i was telling the teachers are important in this nac accreditation in this aqar in this ssr you should not think that we we just gave all our uh, publications list workshops this that and the others it's finished no you add to each and everything you add to all the criteria you add to all the criteria so in curricular aspects also the first one a teacher can say like okay see we have this outdated syllabus and we need a new one maybe like next year people may say okay we don't need to read about the previous plague but now we have to incorporate this covid thing into the syllabus into the history yes so the teacher can bring that kind of change government need not act you can give a representation and the government gives instructions going to the institutional values and best practices these things are also defined by the teachers they can give their own best practices if they are doing something like i'll tell you one of our faculty members he has put a box called as idea box in his department when i went to i mean i i go on visit sometimes to departments i went to his department and that there was this box instead of suggestions or grievances the box was 
idea box the student if he is getting an idea he can drop an idea in that box and that head of the department will take out that idea and he will try to implement it with the help of other students with the teams that's great that's the best practice so like this what are the uh, things which add value to your institution additional value added value and what are the best practices that can be practiced inside the institution to get good grade this is how a single teacher each and every teacher can think of he can contribute to the department and all departments make the institution and this is the distribution of metrics and key indicators if you can see so see the we have all criteria seven criteria for everything for universities autonomous colleges affiliated constituent colleges you have seven criteria for all type of educational institutions there is no exemption but the key indicators are different you can see universities and autonomous colleges have the same key indicators 34 34 whereas affiliated colleges have less for the ug it is 31 for the pg it is 31 so because there is a difference in the infrastructure and funding and uh, several factors these key indicators are less in number for affiliated or constituent college so that way you are fortunate i can say you have qualitative metrics you have quantitative metrics so how many metrics are there for quality it is 35 metrics for quantity it is 58 metrics and totally it is 93 you can see for a ug government college the total metrics are only 93 which is very less compared to the other things and how distribution of weightage according key indicators you can see this is the curricular aspects for affiliated constituent colleges what is the number 100 marks are for curricular aspects 350 marks for teaching learning evaluation research innovation only 110 marks or 120 so you can see how they have distributed because for a government degree college you know we, there are no not many facilities for research uh, in the college provisions are not there that's the reason you know for university it is 250 for whereas for the college it is only 110 but for teaching and learning the marks were large because that is the only place where you can earn more i'll show you this slide again see this is teaching and learning and evaluation you see 200 for the university whereas 350 for the college so you just check like out of the seven criteria which criteria has more marks you have to check with that and you as a teacher you have to see where you can contribute more because that is 350 marks and for teaching and learning you can contribute you can conduct uh, programs like quizzes seminars projects all these things and uh, you can deliver some lectures you can do some uh, extension activities and all this and you can add to the institutional marks infrastructure learning resources is the same for everybody student support and progression <coughs> you can see because you got more marks in your teaching learning evaluation here the marks are a bit less in student support and progression i mean they are not expecting you up to the level of iits or other in other universities <clears throat> but here uh, support and progression should be more here a bit more why because uh, from the universities they expect research they they expect research output and some um, money like some earning but from the colleges they don't expect that but what is that they are expecting they are expecting more output from the students So that is the only thing a college can give it out so that's the reason for all the institutions the key metrics are different so for six marks are same for everybody governance leadership management <clears throat> and the last one institutional values best practices also it is same for everybody so please go through this see the total score is same so this is why you have same grading system for everybody 
like the marks are differently distributed in each criteria but at the end the total score is 1000 1000 1000 and if i say a grade for a university or a grade for a college it means one and the same the metrics are different but the assessment has been done depending on a total similar grading system which is comprising of 100 1000 marks so from this you have to get the points so if you are getting 3.0 and above you are in a grade so below that you you have you have been put in you will be put into b plus plus b plus b c and d d is just fail no accreditation so all these marks will add to your institutional criteria and there is something called as optional metrics so few metrics can be opted out like a 10 totally 10 weightage per criteria can be opted out it is applicable only for colleges so because you are gdc uh, begum paid this is applicable for you like you can opt out 10 metrics but here the condition is you please see this condition here all metrics in criteria 1 2 and 7 are essential you cannot opt out any kind of metric you have to attempt each and everything whereas you go to 3 4 5 and 6 from there from each criteria you can choose something but it will be like a total of 10 per criteria can be opted out so what is that this is 10 weightage friends this is not 10 criteria 10 weightage i mean 10 marks which is equivalent to 10 marks you can opt out something like that so metrics identified as optional can only be opted out so they will mark whether this is optional or compulsory while filling the ssr while filling the aqr they will tell you what is compulsory what is mandatory and what is optional and that only can be opted out so reading of your guidelines ssr guidelines is very very important qualitative metrics cannot be opted out so only in quantitative metrics like giving the numbers giving the values few things can be opted out which is not compulsory giving the values in the sense maybe like uh, how many um, how much uh, money has been spent on electricity bills some figures some numerical values so that is quantity how many students attended so and so program that's a quantity that's a number so wherever these kind of things are coming few things can be opted out if they are not marked essential only in criteria 3 4 5 and 6 but for all the other criteria all the three criteria 1 2 and 7 everything is essential and you have to check which is optional and which is not optional metrics so the data submitted on quantitative metrics will be subjected to validation exercise with the help of data validation and verification process which is dvv we call it and the responses to qualitative metrics will be reviewed by the peer team on site so when they are coming here peer team is coming here and they will see the qualitative metrics like I will say I, I am using this best to, best practice. So they will come and check the best practice. Do you have a harvest pit? Yes, that's a best practice of my institution I say. So they will check whether I have a harvest pit. Do I have any garbage collection systems? Is the uh, what you say ambience of the college proper or not? Do the children have proper transportation facility? Is the gate proper? Like are, can they enter properly and all? So yes, peer committee is going to check all these things but this happens only after the institution clears the pre-qualifier stage so the institution has a pre-qualifier stage which is sss so it should have like it should clear the dvv process it should go with the sss it should qualify with the sss and when it qualifies both dvv and sss then only the peer team comes to or like visits your institution assessment and accreditation process will proceed further as per the following conditions you can read the conditions i just don't want to read all those <coughs> you can see 
so this is the process like the sequence of process which will be followed by the NAC committee to visit your college so please read your guidelines properly you will understand all this so you have SSS which is student satisfaction survey which is very important you will have a questionnaire for colleges like you it is only like 100 or 10 percent of the student population whichever is less so you can get those many responses for SSS and you are qualified that's it and this is the table showing the institutional grades so what are the grades you can see here for A it is 3 above like 3.01 to 3.25 B plus plus is here, B plus is here. So the, this looks like a small value, but when you show the matrix, this value is very big. The small change here, the small difference of like 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, this, this is very big when it comes to the value of matrix. So when you start calculating the uh, score for you or for your SSR, depending on the matrix, you will understand how hard it is. So you can calculate for yourself my friends it's not just the job of IQS coordinator or the members to do all these things individual teachers can go along the SSR guidelines the NAC guidelines and they can also see what are the things they can contribute to the institution especially the IQC coordinators role here is to motivate encourage the teachers to understand the process of SSR and accreditation and also encouraging the teachers to provide all such kinds of data if they do not have one they have to make I mean they have to get that what are the things to focus what, what will you focus on that first focus on the criterion wise marks weightage who will focus on the criterion weights my weightage IQSC coordinator will anyway focus he in turn will tell the teachers where to focus, where we are lagging, where the score is getting less and where we have to improve. He will tell and all the teachers have to further do accordingly depending on the criterion wise marks weightage. As I told you in teaching learning evaluation we had more marks like 350. So you can focus on that criteria to achieve maximum marks leaving the other things so just look at the weightage and then work accordingly and communication is very very important with alumni and parents so you please uh, do that because when the peer team comes they will have a meeting with the alumni and parents and if the feedback is going bad you are going you are going to lose your grade for sure so please do that so this thing can be done with the teachers also Teachers can start talking to students and their parents at, at the ground level first and uh, alumni also if possible and college can conduct alumni meetings, parents meetings to get good score. Updating website and continuous feedback system. So this is very 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 important that is you have to update your website college website and you have to get a continuous feedback system there should be a feedback link which will give you feedback continuously and not just taking the feedback you have to act accordingly what remedies you have shown what improvements you have shown and student satisfaction survey is also important thing to focus so because this is a continuous process what are the things involved in the continuous process you have identification of stakeholders development of communication strategy development of communication sh uh, schedule then implementation control and continuous adjustment so you do all these things this is for any organization this is a continuous process it doesn't stop your NAC SSR or accreditation nothing stops it's a continuous process so from past we have come up to here we are looking into future 